so we finished the study of Beatitudes. Today we'll not have any translation, okay? We'll just speak and we'll all learn together, okay? So um, we studied the Beatitudes, the attitudes that a disciple of Jesus should be having. And I think it's not we heard, we are putting it in practice. Are we going to practice it? We are going to practice it. Because once you hear and if you don't practice it, it will be counted against you. So it is better you don't know because... You know, nothing will be counted. But once you know it and you don't do it, it will be counted. So, uh, because once we go up to heaven, there will be a place where it will be all uh, black and white. You know, you heard it and you didn't do it. You know, that will be charged against you. I'm talking very legal words, okay? So, today I want to get into another uh, phase of uh, discipleship. Jesus making his first disciple everybody say first disciple so there should be a first anytime everywhere without that first you can't get the next so first is always important and in our life we we study the principle what Jesus did in order to make his first disciple he was God and he was the creator he came in the form of flesh but still he needed disciples whom did he need he needed disciples he needed disciples because he knew one day he will be gone and the responsibility that he is having is to groom these disciples when he is gone the disciples will take control and do the things and what the disciples did is what we see today as a church after Jesus went 2024 years probably now and we see the church has multiplied it has become millions and millions of people it is because of the work of the disciples by the power of the Holy Spirit so today we'll see into the first disciple making of Jesus and how many of you like to be the disciple of Jesus are you all the disciple of Jesus? As I always said, once you are a disciple of Jesus, your next thing is you need to start making disciples. That is the protocol. So Luke's gospel is uh, the, the book that I have taken for the meditation. Chapter number five is where we are going to study. Luke's gospel, chapter number five. Are you all okay? Understanding? Okay. Luke's gospel, chapter number five. Before this chapter, Jesus knew Simon Peter. He knew Simon Peter. Because you see in chapter number 4, verse number 38, Jesus left the synagogue. Do you know what a synagogue is? You know a synagogue? Synagogue is um, a makeshift arrangement for people of Israel because they did not have a temple. When they had the temple, they did not have a synagogue. Once the temple was destroyed, the people were separated and they were scattered into different places. And they needed a place of worship. And in order to worship, they found a place called synagogue. And uh, at least 20 males should be there who were circumcised in order for a building to be converted into a synagogue. Even now, the same principle is operating all over. It's not just in Israel. We have many, many synagogues around the world because the Jews were scattered into different places. Recently, I had a chance to go and visit a synagogue, which is in Kerala, uh, and a small little building, but it was protected by the police when I went because of the war uh, uh, that is happening uh, attack towards you know, Palestine and Israel. So the police presence was there, but still people go in and see what a synagogue is. It's an amazing experience when you go into a synagogue. Jesus used to go to a synagogue very religiously. What he used to do was, he used to teach in the synagogue. He was a teacher. He was a rabbi. He was a guide for the people there. And one day he went uh, to the synagogue and after that he went into the house of Simon. What is it? He went into the house of Simon. What was the reason he went into the house of Simon? The reason was not mentioned. But when he went there, he saw the mother-in-law of Simon was very sick. So Jesus went there and healed that woman. And then other gospel says, 
uh, she prepared the meal and everybody ate. So that is a story you need to park. So you must imagine Peter was a, not a newbie to Jesus. He was already known by Jesus and now the, in, now the story moves from Peter's house into this amazing uh, place where Jesus is standing near a lake. What is the name of the lake? Read that. You don't need to look at me and say, what on earth, which lake was that? You know, chapter number 5, verse number 1. Which was that lake? Gennesaret. Jesus was standing near the lake. It is no harm going and standing near the lake. You know, you know some people don't even do anything like that. You know, God, I don't go there because I need to be supra spiritual. No, no lake, you know, you know, no lake, you know. But Jesus was standing near a lake. And when he was standing near the lake, what was happening? The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. Hey, hear me. What was do Jesus doing near the lake? What was Jesus doing near the lake? Come on, Revin. What was he doing? Ha, ah, taking some selfie and, you know. Hey, putting on the Facebook and uh, enjoying the sunset. No, 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 no. He went to the lake, but what he was doing? He was preaching. What was he doing? He was standing and preaching. You know, and that's an amazing thing what you read there. What was he doing? Jesus was standing near the lake and preaching. And when he was preaching, there was a huge crowd of people standing there and listening the word of God. What a beautiful setting. You can imagine now how the setting is. After that, he saw at the water's edge two boats. Everybody are following me, right? I'm not just telling the story. I want you to see how the Bible writer is putting all the sequence. Jesus was standing near the lake and he was preaching. And it was a big crowd. Now, when the crowd was growing bigger and bigger, now he wants a place away from the lake so that people all are standing in the lake uh, on the bank of the lake and Jesus is preaching. So he saw two boats there and one of the boat was whose boat? Simon Peter. Jesus already knew him, right? He was not just standing there and looked at some boat and said, ha, 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 hoi. Can I come into your boat? No, no. Jesus already knew. So every friendship that you make will lead you to a place where you can share the word of God. You got it? Every friendship that you make, everybody hear this, every friendship that you make must lead you to be a place where you can share the word of God. Our friendship must not be only on the earth. Our friendship with people must be friendship on the earth and our friendship must lead people from earth into heaven. How is that good? You got it? Sometimes we become friends. We don't tell anything to anybody because we will lose the friendship. You know, you know, I don't want to, you know, that friendship, I want to keep it. You know, church is church pastor. Bible is Bible pastor. Friendship is friendship. I want to keep that friendship, you know, because I want to build up that friendship. But if you are a good friend of somebody, you don't want that friend to go to hell. You don't want that friend to go to one day you need to give that person Jesus. So before that, what you need to do, you need to use your power that God has given. Jesus went into Simon's house. You know, the reason was not mentioned. But in that house, what did he do? He performed a healing. He performed a healing and the mother-in-law is healed. My goodness, if mother-in-laws are happy, the house is happy, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You know, so now mother-in-law is happy and Peter is happy. Now Peter's boat is used as a podium for Jesus. Jesus started preaching. Now you can see this one. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. You know, just take it out, you know. You are all cleaning, tired. You know, just help me. I will be sitting there preaching. You do whatever you want to do. You know. So then he sat down. Till now, what he was he doing? 
he was standing and he was preaching you see the sequence that he was standing and preaching now he is sitting and preaching you can do everywhere anything right you can sit and preach you can stand and preach you can sleep and preach whatever posture you do it doesn't matter preaching should be there in your work you can preach in your kitchen when you are working you can preach to your children children may think mama again this preaching but i'll tell you those words that you are just saying will carry a weight after some time wherever you are preaching is not just bombarding words preaching is a way to communicate what is the word preaching is a word of communication what you know you impart is what preaching is all about and you need to impart it to people now they sat down and now jesus taught from the boat so now peter is such a wonderful man he saw a healing in his house now he's going to see a miracle in his boat you know what an amazing personality right so now the boat is empty when jesus finished speaking he said to simon who is jesus there who is jesus he is a miracle worker right already now simon knows he is a miracle worker and the other thing that jesus is he is a carpenter's family guy he knows a bit of carpentry skills as well so now jesus after finishing the conversation he is asking the simon Simon put your net into the waters you need to put your net into the deep water and let you catch some fish you need to catch some fish so now the disciple training starts here okay giving the boat is one thing allowing jesus to preach is another what they already did they washed the net they washed the net they cleaned the net and now it's home time they gave an extra overtime to hear the message from jesus now jesus is telling put the net again into the water what is it what is it jesus saying put the net again into the water what will be your attitude what will be your attitude we know jesus can heal he healed my mother in law now he is a carpenter you know till then jesus has not proclaimed he is a son of god those days there were miracle workers there were people who were performing miracles teachers of law used to come home and apply oil and pray and all those things were happening those days so you know miracle was not just healing that is a normal thing that can happen but this is something different peter talks to jesus he turns back to jesus and say jesus what is it master you see the word what is he using come on everybody say master master meaning rabbi that is teacher because he was a teacher in the synagogue teacher we have worked all day what is it we have all we have worked all night and haven't caught anything we worked the whole night and we have not caught anything that is the reality what is the reality explanation is given the next thing is very important but at your word what is it but at your word we will put the net the first step of a disciple is even when it doesn't make sense to us just obey the lord just obey the it doesn't make sense to us it is hard to even comprehend but in order to become the disciple of jesus just obey what jesus tells so one among the principle of becoming a disciple being a disciple is blind obedience to god what is it blind obedience to god blind obedience needs a bit of nothing just trusting that man just trusting that person and you will just blindly obey do you blindly obey god come on i want to ask you very personal question do you blindly obey god sometimes it is very hard we obey god but we don't blindly obey god what is it we use our rational many times we use our rationality many times 
it can't happen that way it will not happen that way that is what the doctors have told that is what my bosses have told it is not going to happen and let me live the life that i am living that is a natural life but today what i am encouraging each one of you move away from the natural scenario and look at the lord almighty and say god i want to obey you blindly no matter it is hard for me my human rationality is becoming against my faith but i want to completely blindly obey you and today i'll tell you once you blindly obey god your life will be very different i have tried my my god to just blindly obey him it was very hard i'll tell you it was very hard to blindly obey people say blindly obey god do it just don't just don't you know it was very hard for me as an individual i want to see things before seeing things i can't jump into that conclusion but once i learned to just blindly believe god my life has never been the same today i want everybody to start exercising a bit deeper faith blindly obey god you know your next meal is there right your next meal is there everybody knows your next meal is there because in the church we have the food even if you don't have money in the church there is food your next meal we know for another two days our meal is already there but you know what when jesus was teaching the prayer what did he pray and teach them give us our daily bread what was the prayer you see that what did jesus teach give us our daily bread he was teaching to a community those days where the daily bread was very very hard very very hard if somebody is sick in that family that day they go hungry in our good old days in our village community people still had the facility of going and plucking a banana and eating and doing things like that at least they could do something or begging but in those community those days they could not even go there and do those things so they had to pray to god god you need to give our food daily and they were very anxious and that is the reason jesus had to say look at the birds they don't what they don't do they don't sow and they don't harvest but still their need is been taken care of if i can take care of those birds how much more wonderfully i can take care of you you see that language that jesus uses it was not to a rich community that jesus was talking he was talking to a very very poor community where their daily needs itself was a problem but are we beyond are we above that level are we honestly tell me are we above that level but don't we have a need but don't we have a need our deed may not be for our daily bread our need can be something different as well so that is the reason jesus gave a template of prayer the prayer was not you pray this he said you pray like this what is that you pray like this it was a template of prayer and it was not just the prayer so people make it a mistake saying that is the lord's prayer and we need to say it i understand that was a template of prayer it is not that we say that prayer again and again but we use that template to fit in everything that has been mentioned in that prayer and say lord i don't want to miss out anything hallowed be your name praising god needs to come first forgiving people need to be in my prayer all it is a template of prayer if you pray the prayer it is no wrong but you don't remain there but you put your needs and say god this is my need this is my need i want lord my strength is not enough to navigate me throughout this day father lord i don't know how i will drive my car lord i want your 
strength uh, so that I can drive my car over this day, Father. My body is weak, Lord. I am going into my workplace. Uh, I don't know my body condition, uh, but Father, I pray that you would strengthen my body and I will give you the best in my workplace. Some of the prayers can be like that. You understand what I'm talking? So now, Jesus is going into that boat, talking, sharing the good news, and at the end, he's telling, now I want to reward you. Once you give your boat to Jesus, he will reward you. What is it? Once you give your boat to Jesus, he will reward you. He's never a debtor of anybody. He will never take your boat for a ride. He will never take anything from you and leave you empty. Once you give your boat to the Lord, your life absolutely will change. Now, these people are just blindly obeying God and they put their net. What they're doing? Obeying God and putting the net. What did they see? What did they see? Come on. Read that verse. You're looking at me. Read that verse. What did they see? Did they see a miracle? They caught great number of fish. They caught great number of fish. Previous verse was, throughout the night, they did not. But at the word of Jesus, what did it happen? A large gathering of fish came into the net. And now, what is the story? Okay, what is that? Come on, read it. Nets did not break. It was about to break. And that was the huge fish. So they signaled their partners in the other boat and all of them came and helped them. So this is an amazing story there, right? And they came and filled both the boats so full that they began to sink. <laughs> now, number one, the, the net was about to break. Now they filled both the boats and now boats were about to sink. You see the blessing of God? Do you want to be blessed like that? Huh? You want to be blessed like that? My goodness, I thought you will say, yes, pastor, I want to be blessed. You know, you go to your work and uh, you are doing a good job and your company boss comes and say, hey, I am going to give you half the share of the company. How many of you want it? Somebody is like, pastor, I know my boss, pastor. <laughs> that is, <laughs> you know your boss. You know, you need to blindly believe God can do something great. Yesterday I was talking to one of our brothers who was working along with me. Have you heard about uh, the disaster that happened in Kuwait? Um, near about 50 people. And one of our brother's relative is that man, the owner of the company. You know, so he entered that company as a normal worker. The Arab man, you know, in, in Kuwait, it is all run by the Arab people. The Arab man, you know, like this man's honesty work thing. He said, I want you to just partner me a little bit, little bit, you know. And that partnership went into 50%. Now, he is having the 50 share of that whole business wherein near about 25,000 people are working under them. You can imagine the type of magnitude. So, if you say nothing, you cannot excel in your workplace, that is a lie. If you believe God, if you honestly work, my God will lift you up. My God is a God of excellence. Once you give your boat, wherever you are, whichever area of work you give, this was their workplace. What is their workplace? The boat was their workplace. The lake was their workplace. And Jesus entered into their workspace and said, it is not your strength that can bless your work. It is the obedience that you do in the presence of God that can bless your workplace. Did you get it? Did you get it? It is not your hard work. Some people will work day in and day out thinking that your hard work will earn you greater. I understand you need to be faithful and working hard. But if you just work hard without the presence of God, that you will be a normal staff. But if you work hard with the power of God, your boat will start becoming blessed. Hallelujah. Now, one boat 
is not enough they started calling the other boat also and started filling up that boat as well you know normally fishermen don't what they don't do they don't share what they don't even if it goes into the water they are not bothered man i need to be blessed i don't bother the others you know but now their net is about to break so when the net is about to break they understood mm, the other friend also we can get everybody happy god will bless you so that you and i can be a blessing for somebody else as well i'll start off there you will be blessed beyond measure so that you can be a blessing for somebody otherwise you will be just concentrating on you you and your family but our god is a great god he will bless you so that you are not blessed individually you are blessed so that you can be a blessing for many others and that is the reason i pray for our people our people will become businessmen in jesus mighty name why i pray like that is you when you become a business person for example robin okay come in robin here i'll just give you an example you know you know when robin came into new zealand the only address he knew was me you know uh, i picked him up from the airport brought him home started the journey how many years back 10 years back not too many years back you know 10 years back he went through a, a horrible uh, uh, scenario he was given a job by one of those people here as a barber you know he's a barber he's a hairdresser so a job was given to him and you can imagine my hair all he cuts you can see my situation uh, but a good job he's doing you know now he he uses my hair and say what shall i do i say catch one by one and color it you know so hard work so once he got uh, this place where he was working in panmure there was only one day his visa was expiring rob in those days never knew anything he gave his passport to his boss you know in the good old days they do that you know they give the passport to the boss the boss will give to the agent and the agent takes care of the visa so robin had given his passport to the agent and you know he doesn't look at anything he did not even know his visa was getting over the boss comes to him and says more only one more day for you and uh, what happens where is my passport no visa and the boss says if i give you the visa i know one day you will put a barber shop and you can become a bigger fellow so what i did was i kept that passport in my cubby and i did not put it for the immigration can you imagine people can be that bad the jealous people can be very very bad you don't know how it can you know the one day and i'm getting a call from this young man crying on the phone and saying pastor i don't know what to do pastor i don't know what to do my boss has cheated me i said son don't worry my god will never fail and and uh, immediately things started happening he went to anihanga there was one arabic guy who said i will give you a job you know those days barbers were in quite a good demand he said i will give you a job but we don't have time it's just 24 hours i said bring the papers brought the papers put it to the immigration and you know what then there was no stoppage and that visa came through god's grace it's an amazing grace of god then god gave him a desire to put a business he put a business through that business how many people are blessed how many families are blessed you know one among the families here sitting here they are believers they are worshiping the lord and they said we want to worship the lord and he said sunday go off and worship the savior you see when our people become men of god of integrity god can bless them come on son hallelujah i'm just giving you an example of how god can use your blessing meaning it is not that rocket science that everybody will be blessed without having any problem we all go through problem we all go through those situation now he understands how hard 
how problematic visas can lead people into. Last week, he called me up and said, I got one family from Malaysia. They were supposed to be here today. They are not here because the children are sick. They came here on a visa. They don't know what to do. They are quite elderly people, no job. This guy just knew to give my number and said, talk to pastor. You know why I'm saying this one is because when we go through some situation, they understood it is not the strength of that person. It is a prayer of a community that has sustained us. Hallelujah. When God does something marvelous, never be selfish to yourself. Let the ball roll over. Hallelujah. Let it keep rolling and filling other boats. Imagine you, our church is filled out with 100 business people how many families we can cater how many families will be blessed how many people in New Zealand will be blessed because of our church I was talking about one family that serves the Lord who has given job for 25,000 people and I believe you and I can become like that can't we can't we if you are having a dream if you give your boat to the Lord it is the Lord's responsibility to fill your boat and the boats that are supporting you come on somebody shout a hallelujah for Jesus hallelujah I believe we all are here in New Zealand for a plan for a purpose of God you are not going to be hand-to-mouth people live only for your survival my God is going to bless you beyond measure sure that God's name will be glorified in and through your life. I'm not just telling stories. I'm just giving you examples of how God can do things. Now, this is one part of discipleship. When you start discipling, know that person better. Go to that person. Talk to that person. Before even you do anything, see their small little needs. It can be a fever of the mother-in-law. Pray for that person. You know, you do not know that prayer can lead you into that person becoming the first disciple. Isn't it? You know, Jesus saw that in chapter number four. And then later on in chapter number five, this person is going to become the first disciple of Jesus. Now, that story doesn't stop there. What is it happening? Now, when Simon Peter saw this, what? When he saw his mother-in-law getting healed, he did not do this. Okay, you see this? You know, he saw his mother-in-law getting healed, right? Did you see what he did here? When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me. Lord, you see that? See, first he was master. What was it? What was his language? Master, take my boat. We worked all day. Now, all night we worked. Now, you want to send to this again net? Now, that word master is changing from rabbi to kurios. Lord. You see that? What is it? Lord. God. This Lord word is not used normally. It, that word is used with reverence. What is it? It is used with reverence. Normal conversation led to Jesus coming into the house. A miracle happened. But now that is leading into a greater miracle where Jesus is showcasing himself. He's not just a teacher. He is the Lord. And who is seeing this? Peter is seeing this. Now he says, go away. I am a sinful man. What is it? Did Jesus say to Peter, you are a sinful man? <laughs> Did Jesus say? Sometimes the mistake that we do is, we go to Ravin and say, brother, you are a sinner, brother. You are a naughty fellow. We try to tell people their sin. Sin is something what people do it, keep it secret. They don't want anybody to know it. They keep it secret. Some sins can become a habit. But when sins become a habit, they don't consider it as a sin. Have you got it? When sins become a habit, they don't consider it as a... Beating your wife is a sin.
I hear only some woman who is not married saying, yes. What are the other people saying? It's okay, pastor. It's a lifestyle, pastor. If I don't get too beating, I don't sleep well. Hmm? But, it is a sin. Because, do you beat your own body? Huh? Do you beat your own body? No. Why you don't beat your own body? Because it, it pains. Bible talks very clearly. If you beat your own body, you are not a normal person. You are having you no, something. That is what the Bible says. You are not psycho. <laughs> that all are new words. In the Bible, that psycho word and all is not there. In the right sense, the man in the right sense will not beat himself. That is the language. Because if he beats himself, he is not right. And the Bible talks about one story where Jesus goes into a place where that man was beating himself and bruising himself. And he cries out, why Jesus have you come here? I was living in peace and now you have come in order to torment me. And Jesus asks, what's your name? And he says, Legion. I have plenty of them. Not one name I can say. I am a battalion of devils. Jesus cast that fellow out and the pig story, you know it, right? And the Bible says, after that, he put on clothes and he started following Jesus. Till then, what was he doing? He was beating himself. So, now when you get married, your wife, your husband is not away from your body, they become one with you. You become one body. You got it? The principle, you got it? You got it? Husband, wife become one body. They are not two, but they are. Everybody say, but they are not two, they are. So that is the reason why Sharon is not happy with it. You both are two different people. So that is the reason Christianity does not allow husbands or wife beating each other. There are cultures that supports, but now the world has become quite strong. No physical violence is allowed in any shape, in any form. But in the good old days, people used to keep quiet and they say, his father also was like that grandfather also was like that so he also will be like that his child also will be like that you don't think only men beat women women beat men also I've seen some families one woman was jumping on one man pouncing and beating and the man is saying please leave me and the woman says no I'm not going to and then bashing and I was thinking goodness what on earth the world has become you know it is not you think beating is not just one side beating is every side but if that sin becomes outside and everybody knows it it becomes a part of your lifestyle that is the reason I say once that anger you dominate and you overcome it that the chain of habit that the devil wants to put upon you will be broken in Jesus mighty name even alcoholism is like that even smoking is like that adultery is like that anything that you do within inside if you publicly expose it and you feel no shame of it it becomes a habit and it no more becomes a sin sin is something that you do and you don't want anybody to know it you understand that is sin now don't talk to anybody about their sin who is going to talk about their sin the holy spirit is going to talk right you got it holy spirit is going to talk and when the holy spirit talks you will not get pain but there is a transformation you got it you got it? I don't want to make this pulpit as a pulpit where I 
preach making people you know you are a sinner and you are a sinner no i want to talk about the word the word of god and when the word of god is spoken it will trigger in you and you will come out and say father i am a sinner lord i am a sinner it is the holy holy spirit that can make us feel what we should really feel when the devil will say it is okay son it is okay that is a part of life because he knows when it becomes a part of life he will get you forever into hell so the devil will say it's okay it's okay it's okay it's okay you be like that but the holy spirit will say son no 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 that is a sin what you are looking at the internet is a sin it's not normal other people don't see that no don't do that don't do this don't write like that that's a sin when the holy spirit immediately ministers uh, you need to cry out to the lord and say lord i am a sinner i will never do that you see that that's a sign of a disciple you got it that's a sign of a disciple you don't want anybody to pounce on you and say you're a sinner but the word of god when the word of god comes the miracle of god happens your blessings what god is doing in your life will not make you feel just comfortable you will not be like oh my goodness how many fish i got i will enjoy this no even the blessing that god pours upon you will make you evaluate yourself and say i am not worthy for this lord i am not worthy lord i am not worthy now what jesus says for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken and so were james john the sons of zebedee simon's partners who are the partners of simon there james and see all the disciples that jesus is going to have all were there in that setting now the next step is happening then jesus said to simon read that verse come on everybody then jesus said to simon don't be afraid don't be afraid he was very afraid he has never seen such a big catch he was really afraid don't be afraid from now on you will fish for people you will fish for people so from him getting blessed to another journey where he can become a blessing so i'll take you to the steps of discipleship are you okay with me now the story is almost there now the first step what jesus did to make peter the disciple the story that you read come on have a relationship come on everybody say have a relationship wherein you can go into their house you can go into their house build a relationship with people the first and the foremost step to make disciple is building relationship with people next one okay don't be afraid to ask a favor from anybody don't ask don't be afraid you know jesus is the master he's a creator why does he need anybody but boat you know asking a favor of anybody is not a wrong thing asking saying hey can can i come and have your house as a house of prayer today can i ask i want to ask can i use your house today to pray with you people have you ever done this with your friend have you ever done this with your friend who is not a non believer becoming a friend is one the second step don't stop just becoming a friend the second step is going there and uh, using their facility to speak the word of god using their house as a podium or a place where you can you can share the word of god use that use that the third one is just don't walk without praying blessing upon them just don't walk out saying i used your facility thank you next week also will come next to next week also will come some people are like that they will become a pain everywhere you know one day they get dosa next day also they'll come dosa then you know you are using every friendship not to fill your tummy you are using that friendship so that that person can be blessed it is not you getting blessed you are using the power that is given in you to translate the blessing god has put in you to bless somebody else are you okay with it so you are building a friend so that not just because you want to enjoy the fellowship pastor nobody is my friend i go there enjoy lifestyle and come back home that's okay that is okay but you, that is not discipleship 
when you want to make disciple use that house or use that place to bless the other person when you go to the other house just don't go empty handed just don't go empty handed okay simple going to somebody's house to pray just take a cup of something or a, a bottle of something or a pack of something be a person of blessing that person must never feel you are a liability you must be a blessing for somebody hallelujah jesus fulfilled that and then you ask what shall i pray for you hey are you okay when i came into your house is everything okay can i pray for your house needs and believe that when you pray that house will be blessed beyond measure we can do that only we can do that nobody else on the planet earth can do that you and i can do that you can fill that empty house with blessing because you are not going alone into that house you are going with jesus into that house hallelujah hallelujah that is the reason i say your gathering should not be a social gathering it will convert into a spiritual gathering social gathering should turn out into a spiritual gathering and now what is happening once the miracle has happened you don't need to do anything you don't need to ask them to fold their knees you don't need to ask them to lift their hands you don't need to ask them to cry out you don't need to ask them to say any prayer they themselves will do it hallelujah because people are tired of following what people are saying but when the holy spirit starts ministering their mouths will start opening up hallelujah remember what did paul peter and paul and silas do in the prison what did they do they did what what did they do they 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 were praising god in the place that they were put they were praising god they were worshiping god they were adoring god they were not cribbing they were thanking god what happened uh, the prison uh, started shaking the door started opening up at the end of the story the jailer meaning the boss you know the jailer is coming and trembling and he's asking this question master can you tell me what should we do to be saved you see the question is coming from them nobody is forcing them nobody is forcing the jailer but the holy spirit is converting some things so that that jailer can be changed we don't need to do anything you just be honest in the presence of god go into the houses that you have never been this week you go and pray for situations you don't be a miracle worker the one within you is a miracle worker you don't need to do anything super the one inside you is the supreme god you don't need to do anything magical you don't need to show yourself as a superior person than the other jesus never showed anything the performance of a miracle led peter to say you are the lord and he bowed down in front of jesus and the next step is filling their boats for blessing is one and then talking to them and saying why i did what i did why i came to your house why i developed a relationship with you why i prayed with you because i love you i want you to be in heaven because one day will come i will be gone i will be gone to heaven i don't want you to miss out i want you also to come to heaven do you want to have your friend come to heaven as well or do you want your parents to come to heaven as well you need to go into their house you need to start doing what i did you need to start praying how did you feel when i came in you were not comfortable right when i start praying you did not believe that there will miracle happen right when you go into somebody's house as well you may feel the same thing they will feel the same thing but you know what the lord who did a miracle in your house which changed your life is able to use you and change thousands of people so now my job to lead you to christ is done now your job to lead somebody to christ starts uh, what i did for you don't keep it here you start navigating it through and that is the step of disciple what you receive and you give so that people can use it as a tool wherever they go come on let's stand up to our feet and just say to the lord god today my daily needs are been accomplished 
but today father i have certain needs if those needs are fulfilled i know lord it is beyond my imagination it is beyond my capacity ha huh? it is beyond everybody's words i know my limitations throughout the night i struggled throughout my lifetime i did like this but i know at the end of tonight i am a failure i used my skill set i did everything thinking that i will catch at least one but i have become a failure is there anybody here is there anybody here thinking that they are a failure whatever you have done in life have never rewarded you you are standing same after so many years of your struggle in the same place you have never moved even an inch you have not gone even a step forward today i am talking to that spirit that spirit that is within you that is making you feel depressed that spirit that is making you feel annoyed of yourself that spirit that is making you feel upset over every situation i rebuke that spirit and i pray that the holy spirit will come into you who is a comforter i said comforter the holy spirit will comfort you he will guide you he will teach you he will strengthen you now if your boat is empty i am believing along with the rest of the people here jesus is getting into your boat hey come on somebody see, see here see here in your spirit hallelujah jesus is coming into your boat he is sitting in your boat hallelujah ora bashagadalaraba it's not the pastor's voice it is not anybody's voice you are hearing right now it is the voice of jesus you are hearing in your boat which is empty jesus is coming in he is asking you permission can I I come my daughter into your boat which is empty uh, i am coming into your boat right now uh, are you allowing me to sit in your boat uh, hallelujah are you allowing me uh, to come and spend some time uh, uh, with the word uh, with that anointing of the word uh, in your boat uh, are you allowing me uh, so that i can be a blessing for somebody uh, using your facility uh, can i use your house uh, can i use your workplace uh, so that a prayer meeting can happen uh, so that a blessing can fall out through uh, can your house uh, be a house of blessing are you willing to open up your heart are you willing to open up your life right now you may not see anything you may just see your friends john james sons of zebedee they were there with you as partners but they are all the only ones you are seeing right now but after a few seconds the holy spirit is going to minister and your net is going to be filled in jesus mighty name your finances are going to be going to be a blessing not only for you it is going to be a blessing for somebody your house is not going to be a blessing for only your house it is going to be a blessing for somebody else your food that you are having is not just going to bless you it's going to bless somebody else as well uh, hallelujah father in the name of jesus come on i am praying uh, prophetically upon some people uh, who are having emptiness in their life oh rabba shagadala rabba baba baba pray along with me pray along uh, there is an impartation happening right now uh, there is an impartation come on music uh, come on i want the musicians to just play it out for the lord i can sense that there's an impartation of the holy spirit that is moving here an impartation of blessing because jesus is in your boat he is sitting in your boat he is right here in your boat he is doing something marvelous he is doing something great oh rabba baba 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 don't be disappointed child don't be disappointed don't be worried about the things that you did in the night because in the night nobody will see what you caught but my god when he does something for you he will do it in the broad daylight jesus could have come in the night and did a miracle but in front of the crowd in front of people that are seeing in front of your partners in front of your colleagues in front of your same family members my god my god is going to do something marvelous are you obeying god right now 
or are you just working on the moments that God does up? Even if it is so, you are going to have a change in your life. It is going to be an absolute different Sunday morning uh, where my God is going to change your barrenness uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Your emptiness are going to go. He's going to fill you. The next step is so marvelous. Jesus says, now you saw what I did. In the same way, you are not going to catch one fish, two fish. It is not by your strength, child, you are going to catch any people. You are going to catch people. Now you understood you are a failure even to catch fish. How much more you will be a failure to catch people. Now, you know who you are. Peter, James, John, hear me. You are no more going to be people who catch fish. You are going to catch people. Not one, not two. In thousands. That word of God came so vividly, clearly on the day of Pentecost when Peter stood up. He preached a simple message. A simple, simple message. The Holy Spirit worked on that message. 3,000 people accepted the Lord. On one day of message, how marvelous was the transformation. Today, the next step is very important. Peter left his boat, left his net, left everything and followed Jesus. Some people, they want blessing of God. They want their business to be blessed. They want their house to be blessed. That is the end of their story. But God, Jesus is not just for your material blessing. Your material blessing will transform into that spiritual blessing wherein you are able to live everything hey I said live everything live everything and follow Jesus I'm not telling you to resign from your job and just walk off I'm not saying you to throw away your business and walk off but your priority towards that will must be resigned and you need to walk into the priority of God your priority towards the things that you do for the world should be done and dusted. Leave the net, leave the boat and just follow Jesus. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? Then your journey, our journey will be marvelous. This is what the Holy Spirit was ministering to me all these days. Father, I want to just do your will. Will to serve the Lord, love the Lord, love the people around me. Be a man, be a woman that can make a difference as a family, Lord. Come on, let's pray together. This is your moment wherein you can surrender your life and say, Lord, my priorities have changed over years. But today I'm coming back to the priority where it says, I need to just follow you. I'm just following you, Lord. Following you, Lord. I've seen enough of your blessing. Father, nothing is going to hold me back. Even you give me thousands of fish, that is not going to hold me back. Even you get, get me like 10 boats of fish, that is not going to hold me back. Because I know the Lord whom I serve is greater than the fish that is in my boat. The one who is before me is a greater creator who can do anything for me, Father. I bless you, Lord. Let us thank the Lord for the word that God gave. Dedicate our life and saying, God, I'm going to use my relationship, my contacts this week so that I go and speak the life of Jesus. Talk about Jesus into somebody's life. Let's pray together. Father, right now, Lord, I thank you for this beautiful morning where you gave to us to come and hear your word. Talk about how you made your first disciple. Father, help us to make one disciple for your glory, Lord. One disciple for you, Lord. One disciple for you, Jesus. Help us, Father. In our weakness, you will make us strong. Help us to do that, Lord. Thank you. Bless you.
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.